up everyone so prometric centers are opening up again great news uh, and what that also means is some of you who are taking usmle step one will finally be taking it and i know that when i was taking step one i actually found it really overwhelming that i didn't know the details of what exactly to expect on test day i didn't know how exactly does the timing work what does the break time look like how do you do the break time what's going on how do i organize my time all of that and so that's why i made this channel right to make videos uh, for you guys, so you don't have to go through the same questions that I had. So today I'm going to walk you through my entire USMLE experience, the schedule I took, uh, when I took my breaks, how many breaks I took. I am also going to walk you through how the timing works, what the tutorials like, and literally what to expect on test day. I'm going to give you all the details so you don't find yourself confused and worrying about unpointless, useless things on test day. And you can just focus on doing the best possible thing and know exactly what to expect. So let's do it. So let's just get straight into it. I'm going to go over literally every nook and cranny of the implicit details that you should know about your test day because on my test day, I didn't. Um, and so overview, this is all my experience. Uh, and I'm just going to walk you through everything I felt and learned on test day that I think is important for you to know um, because a lot of these implicit things will help. So with that being said, the format of USMLE Step 1 is seven one-hour blocks of 40 questions each, uh, and that's a total of 280 questions. So that's grueling. And you get a 15-minute tutorial at the end, and that tutorial is the same as uh, what's on most of the NBME practice tests. So if you walk through that tutorial on your practice tests, uh, that tutorial in the real life test day is very similar uh, to what you see. The other thing that you also get is 45 mil minutes of allocated break time. So the way that this break time is actually broken down is <laughs> really difficult to understand. And I still did not understand it entirely until I did a full on practice run at my Prometric Center. Uh, and then actually the day of the test, I wanted to know like what exactly is happening. And as I experienced it, I was like, okay, it like solidified in my head. So I'm going to show you guys that whole aspect of the timing of the break and how it works. And hopefully you'll be less confused than I was on test day. The insight into the breaks. So the way this actually works is the moment you start your test, the whole test is supposed to be eight hours, right? So the moment you start your test, there's one timer that will be the holistic test timer, and that will start counting down from eight hours, right? Because the whole, the moment you start, let's say you start at 8 a.m., this test will automatically end eight hours after that. So that timer basically tells you in eight hours, this test will end regardless. But then you also have a section specific timer that will keep track of the time that you have on a specific section. So I'm going to explain this to you now by actually showing you what it would look like if you were going through the test, because it's really confusing otherwise. So let's do that. Now let's just pretend like this is your USMLE test, this fancy PowerPoint presentation. It's not the exact same, but everything I'm showing you here is actually a pretty good resemblance of what will actually happen on test day. Again, this is based on my experience. So yours may vary by bit, but for the most part, it'll be the same. So the first thing that I'll happen is say, are you ready to start your test? And the moment you click yes on that, this timer, which is that whole, you know how I mentioned there's two different timers, the holistic timer will start counting down from eight hours. So the moment you click yes, this starts counting down. So let's just say it starts, right? So you said, yes, I'm ready to start my test. The next thing it'll probably ask you something similar along these lines is, are you ready to start the tutorial? And the moment you click yes, and again, this is exactly the same as what it is on the MBME, so this is not <laughs> proprietary information. But the moment you click yes on this, the tutorial timer, the tutorial's 15 minutes, that will start counting down. So now you're in the tutorial section, and notice how your section-specific timer is still going, right? It's going, it's going, it's going, but your tutorial timer also is going. But let's say you're like, I have already know the I already know the tutorial, I don't need to spend time on it, and you just say, okay, I want to end the tutorial. So what you'll do is you'll end the tutorial, and this timer will stop, and it'll reset. Uh, and it'll reset to, are you ready to start the next block? And the next block, you know, block one is one hour. So that's when it, one hour will start. And the moment you click yes on this, this timer will start. But notice that as we're talking about all of this, this timer at the bottom is still going, right? So you're seeing that this holistic timer is actually how much time you have left, but the section specific timer just will limit the time that you can spend in this specific section. So now, for example, let's say you want to start block one. You say, yeah, I'm ready to start block one. And now let's say you're in block one. The moment you're in block one, the section specific timer for block one starts, but this whole time, regardless of what you are doing, this holistic timer is always going to be going. This holistic timer will never stop. And that's why I'm saying you technically have a 45 minute break 
But if you skip the tutorial, then you technically have almost an hour long break because look at what we just did. When we skipped the tutorial, we added on that extra time right here right this timer was still going to have that extra 15 minutes but the timer that we lost was the section specific timer and so i know this is a bit confusing so i'm going to talk about it one last time just to really hit the point home notice that if you were in block one and this timer ran out the section specific timer ran out you would be kicked out of block one and you'd be done and you'd be staring at the screen that would ask you are you ready to start block two However, this timer would never stop. This timer would still keep running. So let's say you took this whole hour and you know one hour passed, you ended the block. Then what would happen is this timer would be at zero and you'd be pretty much at zero, 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 zero. And this timer right here, would you would have lost an hour because you took the whole hour. So now you'd be at six hours, 56 minutes and, zero, and counting. And now what would happen is now it would ask you, are you ready to start block two? You don't have to start block two. Notice that this timer is still going. So you can actually go and take a five minute break. You'd lose five minutes off of this time, but you still have six sections left. And so notice that those six sections would take you at most six hours. So you still have about 40, 54 minutes of break time remaining, right? So that's what I'm saying. Let's say you didn't want to start block two and you actually went out and took a big break and you lost 10 minutes. So let's say you took a 10 minute break. So now you have six hours, 44 minutes left. Uh, and now you're like, okay, let's start block two. Well, notice how this is still running and you still now have block two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you still have six blocks left, which will take you at most six hours, which means you still have about 43 minutes of break time. And now when you click, yes, you want to start break two, when you, when you click, yes, you want to start block two, you'll actually now start a, the section specific timer, which is going to be the block two timer. Right. And so I know this is really confusing. So I wanted to make this video to really elucidate what exactly the timing and the breaks mean on step one, because it can be confusing if you don't know otherwise. So that was actually the hardest thing to explain about test day. So everything from here on out is going to be really easy. Basically on test day, here are the things you want to make sure you bring. You want to bring your ID, your scheduling permit, bring a lot of snacks, bring lunch, <laughs> a light lunch if you ideally can, because you don't want to eat anything too heavy that could give you some GI issues. Bring water and bring coffee if you're like me. Because what I was doing for, was for each of my breaks, I was getting coffee and I would shove a Girl Scout cookie in my mouth because I get hypoglycemic super fast. So I was taking a break in between each section, going out, taking two sips of coffee, coffee, shoving in like three Girl Scout cookies, going back in and going through the, through the routine. After you get to the center, make sure you get there about 30 minutes before your scheduled time. Your scheduled time is usually available on your um, on your permit. So when you do, you see your permit, you'll see what your scheduled time is. Show up about 30 minutes earlier, just because sometimes things can go haywire. When you go there, you'll have to show them your scheduling permit and your ID. If you don't have either of those things, you will not be able to get in. When you show them both of those things, they will give you a key to a locker, and that locker will allow you to pretty much put all your stuff in there, all your Girl Scout cookies, all of the lunch that you brought, all of the coffee you brought, liquids, um, jackets, anything you want, you can keep stuff in there. I actually did not keep some stuff in my locker. I actually told them, hey, is it okay if I leave my coffee like on this shelf? And they're like, yeah, if it gets stolen, it's not our problem. And I was like, that's totally fine. So I actually left my coffee out. It may change now with the Corona regulations, but I left my coffee out because then it would be easier for me to access and I wouldn't have to open my locker every time. Um, and so now you've put all your stuff in your locker. You'll basically now just sit in the waiting area until you're called up. And when you're called when you're called up, that's an entirely different ball game because when you're called up, you're going to need to open up all your pot. You're pretty much going to go in, and now you're going to be outside of the room that you're going to be testing in. And they're going to ask you to empty all your pockets. So you're going to do that to show them you have nothing. They're going to scan you with a metal detector. If you're wearing glasses, they'll examine your glasses. They'll get your fingerprint and they'll give you two sheets of paper. Uh, in my testing center was laminated paper, but I don't know if that's universal. And they usually also give you a marker to write your um, CIN. And the CIN is basically your ID for the test. That CIN is located on your testing um, sheet that you bring with you, that initial ID sheet. And so now what they'll do is they'll actually make you write your CIN number on the laminated sheet of paper. And the reason for that is because uh, the laminated sheets, one, you're going to get to use them as your scratch paper during the test. And two, that laminated sheet and the CIN number is used for you to log into your USMLE test. So every time you leave the room and when you come back in, you will need to log into your computer. And the way you do that is by entering in your CIN number. And that's why they'll make you write your CIN number on those two sheets of laminated paper. And as I mentioned, the CIN number is usually found, I believe, on your scheduling permit. So once you've done all of this, 
and you've written your CIN number, you will then be taken into the room. And that's where you can then proceed to write your CIN number on your um, computer. And when you do that, the whole shebang that we went over at the beginning of this video, are you ready to start the test? Yes. Are you ready to start the tutorial? Yes. Okay. That's going to happen. Um, as I said, when you're done with a section, so we replicated this at the beginning of the video, basically you can leave anytime you finish a section. If you finish the tutorial and you want to leave, you can leave. Uh, if you finish your first section and you want to take a break, you can come out. Basically when you come out, the larger eight hour clock we talked about will keep running. But the point is you can still leave. When you leave, here are things you need to remember. It may take a lot longer than you think to leave and come back in because when you leave, you will need to fingerprint out. So you'll need to fingerprint out again and show them that you actually left by fingerprinting. And when you come back in, you're going to need to fingerprint in again. Um, and basically when you leave, you can literally do whatever you want. You can take a break, you can get a snack, get some water, splash water on your face. That's what I was doing. And now let's say you're done with your break. Uh, you now want to go back in and you want to start the next section. Guess what? You're going to need to do the whole shebang we just talked about at the beginning, which is you're going to need to empty your pockets. They're going to metal detect scan you again. They're going to have to examine your glasses. Uh, so make sure you take all of this into account when you leave to take your break. You, you might think, oh, it's only going to take me. I'm only going to take a two minute break. But it may end up being a six to seven to eight minute break, especially because all of these procedures take time and sometimes there's a line to get back in the room. Basically, anytime you leave the room, this whole protocol will happen. You'll need to fingerprint out and then when you want to come back in, you'll need to fingerprint in. They'll check your uh, glasses, they'll check your pockets, they'll ask you if you want any more scratch paper, in which case you would return your laminated sheet to them that you're done with and they'll give you a new one. So they can always do that for you if you want, but just know that that takes time and the eight hour clock will always be running. And so, here was my personal schedule. I know always hearing examples helps. So I started the tutorial, and the tutorial is supposed to be 15 minutes, but I already knew what to expect. But I did spend about two minutes in the tutorial because there is a headphone check. So the reason I wanted to make sure my headphones worked was because this is the only chance I have. If I found out my headphones didn't work, at least I could act on it at that moment. If I found out later, like in section five, then I'm losing time for my section. So I took about two minutes, and then I started. I went straight into block one. And that was a 60 minute block, and then I ended it. At which point I took about a break. I took a break. I took a break between every section. I don't know. I know a lot of people don't do this. I needed to. I'm like an anxiety madman. So I left. I did the whole break routine, which was uh, fingerprint out. I went outside. I drank two sips of coffee. I shoved like three Girl Scout cookies in my mouth. I went to the sh bathroom, splashed my face, and then I went back in. And that took about five minutes just because of the whole protocol that we talked about. Then I went through block two. I did the same thing for a break. I went through block three. Same thing for a break. I did went through block four. And now for my break, I actually did my lunch. <laughs> and for my lunch, I ate a peanut butter jelly. So I ate the whole thing. It took about 10 minutes. Uh, and after that, I just did the whole wash my face, some Girl Scout cookies, a huge gulp of coffee because I'd just eaten and my parasympathetic nervous system was going to go off the charts. Uh, and then I basically went in, did block five, another seven minute break, did block six, and then I took another five minute break before I went into block seven. So as I said, there was about 60 minutes of total break time if you skip the tutorial. And I only used 41 minutes of it. And I felt like I got a lot of breaks and I did not feel fatigued at all. I mean, by block seven, everyone in the world is fatigued, but I didn't feel like, holy shit, I'm exhausted. I felt like normal fatigue. Anyone who sits in one seat for eight hours probably feels that fatigue, but I didn't feel like, oh my God, I'm going to pass out. Okay. So that was my personal break schedule. My personal feelings about this is you have more than enough break time. So when you leave, just take your time. You're okay. You have the time. So relax and use it. As I said, I took a break in between every section and I still had 18 minutes of break time left. So you can take long breaks and I encourage you to do that and almost always get some glucose in between sections. Okay. You may feel great coming out of section one and you're like, I don't need shit. I'm done. I'm good. But what you're not calculating is that the next time you can come out again is in an hour. So you may feel good right now. You finish block one, you feel fantastic. Guess what? You have at least another hour of this next section. And during that hour, a lot can change. Maybe your glucose level was at like, I don't know, you're feeling good, you're at 100. And maybe over that hour, you used up so much, you're at 30, right? So you need to preemptively make sure you're keeping up your blood sugar control, you're keeping up your water control. Because as I said, the moment you agree to start the next section, you won't be come out, able to come out for at least 40 to 50 minutes, right? So be preemptive and think ahead about that. 
And as I said, have coffee easily accessible if you're a coffee person. If you're not, have whatever it is you use for energy easily accessible. I ran to the bathroom, I would splash my face, and I'd be like, let's go, let's do this. And then go back in uh, and then just do my coffee shebang. And some additional last minute tips. I would highly recommend everyone set up a practice session at the testing center that you're practicing at. The practice session is basically only three blocks with a 15 minute break in the middle and a 15 minute tutorial. And basically it helps you kind of realize how the testing facility works. You'll understand what Prometric is. I don't think any of those questions are real USMLE questions. I think those questions that they give you on these blocks are actually questions that are on the USMLE free uh, free sample questions. So the questions aren't really that new, but the good part is you get a whole feel of the testing center, you get to meet the staff, you get to hang out, you get to figure out how you're going to use your breaks, where the bathroom is, you get to know all of those things. So I recommend you do that, and this is a practice session that is offered for both step one and step two. So take make advantage of it, uh, and I believe you can find a video, uh, I believe you can find insight into this on the MBME website. Just look up USMLE Step 1 Practice Session. So with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video because I personally felt super confused going into Step 1, and so I didn't want you guys to feel that way. So that's why I made this. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.